Colombia. It is the fourth largest country in South America. It is resource rich and supported by substantial oil reserves along with gold, silver, emeralds, platinum, and coal, according to a recent profile from BBC. The nation is a young constitutional republic with an elected president, extensive court system, and a bicameral congress. Their economy is supported by exporting raw goods and natural resources to the United States and Europe. By simply reading the U.S. State Department's profile, Colombia appears to be a financially stable nation emerging into the world market while taking a more prominent position in both global and regional organizations. However, beyond the idyllic images of Colombian plantations and street vendors, is a state plagued by a history of violence, social service inadequacies, drug cartels, and human rights violations. Civil violence in Colombia dates back to the 19th century as conflict erupted between the conservative and liberal parties. The nation has seen two civil wars as each party sought to take control of the executive branch. In the 1960s, guerrilla organizations founded on extremist ideologies began to emerge. The most prominent of these groups is the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC. What began as a Marxist ideological group mobilized by student leaders eventually developed into a full-fledged national threat in the 1980s. In order to combat these leftist groups, the government established paramilitaries, or informal armed forces trained by the Colombian military. Paramilitary force formation was encouraged to protect landowners, cattle ranchers, and the elite, according to the U.S. State Department's Columbia profile. Today, the government is facing a three-front war against guerrilla groups, paramilitaries, and drug cartels. In other nations, coverage of these human rights violations and acts of violence would herald journalists as heroes, but Colombian journalists are targeted, tortured, or even killed for these stories, despite the ratification of the Colombian Constitution in 1991, which promises freedom of the press. Under former President Alvaro Uribe, Journalists in Colombia were denied press freedoms and were subjected to wiretapping by the state intelligence agency, according to one account from Colombia Reports. Journalists who write critically of the government, military, or elites are greeted with hostility and government censorship. The media in Colombia is monopolized in the hands of the few. News reports are often biased or misinformed as those journalists seeking to reveal the true nature of the situation in Colombia are met with injustices and silenced. Here are some of their stories. According to American Journalism Review, 26-year-old reporter Jenneth Lima received a call from an inmate, a convicted killer, who was a paramilitary leader. The paramilitary leader told Lima to meet him alone in the warden's office the next day. Lima arrived at La Modelo prison along with her editor and photographer. As they were nearing clearance at the prison, the entrance was quite hazy. One take on the rest of the happenings is that the editor and photographer went to get a soda, and when they returned, Lima had vanished. There were no screams or signs of violence. Later that night, a local taxi cab driver saw a young woman crawling out of a dumpster, bloody and tied up. Police reports show that Lima was admitted to a hospital around 8 p.m. Her recollection of the visit are described as the following. Biting, acidic odor as dizziness overwhelmed her at the prison entrance. A man with shiny shoes and a scar over one eye hissing, don't look up. Black masked thugs threw punches at her five foot tall frame. As if being beaten wasn't enough, Lima was also gang raped. The 26 year old remembers being pulled by her hair and told to pay attention. We are sending a message to the press of Colombia. According to Reporters Without Borders, journalist Luis Eduardo Gomez has recently been murdered for investigating the 2009 murder of his son. Gomez was due to testify on behalf of links between a paramilitary group and local politicians. Reporters Mary Luz Avandano and Gonzalo Guillen have been getting threats for their investigative reporting. Avandano had most recently received threats after her article on links between criminal gangs and certain sectors of the police. Guillen has received threats after the release of politician Ingrid Betancourt, who was held hostage by the FARC guerrillas. Paramilitaries continue to threaten democracy and civil liberties. One paramilitary group, the Black Eagles, has been on the Reporters Without Borders list of predators of press freedom for years. The organization, Reporters Without Borders, reports injustices towards journalists in Colombia and around the world.
Any journalist in Colombia may be in danger if they are reporting on any negative government, police, or paramilitary publicity. According to Reporters Without Borders, journalist Vladimir Sanchez Espitia had to flee the southwestern region of Colombia after showing a documentary of police brutality of protesters in Gigante. He had fled after being accused of acting against the security forces and being paid by the FARC. The Gigante area has a large paramilitary presence. Paramilitary groups are so powerful, foreign corporations have even hired them to help with protection. Familiar with Chiquita brand Bananas, the Cincinnati-based company did business with the United Self-Defense Forces of Columbia, known as AUC, to help protect their land. The United States has designated AUC as a terrorist group. The Committee to Protect Journalists reports that there have been 43 journalists that have been killed with a motive confirmed since 1992. This high number of media-related deaths, accompanied by a large impunity rate, makes Colombia one of the deadliest countries in the world for journalists, according to the CPJ. This country is so dangerous that one reporter, Francisco Santos, was denied a life insurance policy by a company because of his job as a journalist. According to an article by Santos on Neiman Reports, in 1990, Santos was a young editor at El Tiempo, one of the largest newspapers in Colombia. Understanding that a publication could mean a true threat to his own life, Santos continued to uncover the truth. Reporting on guerrillas, the paramilitary, or even drug traffickers posed a very serious threat, and when he chose to discuss Plan Colombia, he took an even bigger risk. The plan was created by Colombia with a considerable amount of money being given in military aid by the United States. It aimed at putting a stop to the drug trade out of the country which also meant it would be putting a stop to the profit being poured into the country's illegal armies. Believing in the plan and its hopes at absolving an ever-present military problem and creating peace for the country, Santos simply couldn't resist the chance to report. The result of his publications on topics dealing with paramilitary groups and their rival guerrillas, Santos found himself being kidnapped by Medellin cartel leader Pablo Escobar. He ended up spending eight months chained to a bed before his release. Later, Santos would learn that a FARC guerrilla group had been planning his murder, forcing him to leave the country for Spain and live in exile. In an article by American reporter Todd Robertson, posted to Neiman Reports, he talks of his challenges on reporting in such a high-risk country and how he had no idea of the true danger he and his family would soon face. While reporting and living in Bogota, Colombia, Robertson and his family found themselves in the middle of one of the FARC's largest offensives. On advice from the U.S. Embassy, some Americans in the area found themselves barricading their homes to keep guerrilla troops out that were rumored to be planning a large-scale kidnap. Already nervous, Robertson continued to live in fear as well as in Bogota with his family. It wasn't until a taxi ride that a sense of true threat was ever felt. A driver willingly gave he and his wife details that he and others had collected about his daughter. Knowing facts such as her name, her school, and the time in which she would arrive home every day, led Robertson to believe that his family was in true danger and his job as a journalist had led them there. He began receiving prank calls on a daily basis, and one that was so unsettling that he and his family felt forced to leave the country and head to the safety of Panama. Since his ordeal, as well as countless others, the safety of journalists has become a large part of being able to achieve a successful story. It's clear with a corrupt government like Colombia's, even the most innocent member of their society can become a potential target. Your threat of endangerment is only heightened when your role in society is that of a journalist.